All right, you guys, we are here. We have Sam Panich and Joey Lane in the house right now. You got in the house. You're not, we're not in the house, but I, I wish we were. I wish we all were together. That would be incredible. Yes. Oh I do. God. We should have, we should have done that for the occasion. Sam, this is not your first time on seeing other people. So welcome back. Thank Joey, you. welcome to the show. I have to call out, and I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but the second I heard your name for the first time, I'm like, wow. That kid has like a boy band, like celebrity heartthrob name. Like, how are you not a Disney Channel star it's, with the name Joey it's Lane? It's so funny you say that. First, first of all, thanks, thanks for having me. This is so I'm so excited. I've been telling Sam and you, but mostly Sam, all day how I've been just looking forward to to this moment right here. But uh, yeah, it's a good last name. Throughout my whole life, I've been Joey Lane. You know, I haven't been Joey. They're not Joe. It's it's always been Joey Lane at work. I'm Joey Lane in life, in basketball. I was always Joey Lane. My dream was always to be in a boy band. I joked about that all the time. So it's funny you say that. Um, Sam knows me well enough to know that I, I could have been, I could have been, but, uh, wow. But, oh, yeah. we got an eye roll from Sam over here. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know if you want to hear Joey sing. He's got the looks, but uh, the vocals. I don't <laughs> I know. I kind He's of no do. Jonas brother. No, I'm I'm completely. Joking. You never know. I'm completely joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joey, give everybody a quick refresher, or just share who you are and what you do, and then we will also give a little refresher on Sam. Yeah. Um. So Joey Lane from Chicago, Illinois. Um. Twenty five years old. I work in sales now, but I'm most. I don't know, well-known is probably a, a weird way of saying it, but most well-known for, for being a, a collegiate basketball player at Ohio State. Uh, played there for, for four years, parlayed that into a little bit of a media sort of side hustle gig career thing going on now. Um, have my own podcast, just like that's what us three all have in common here, uh, called Drive the Lane, where we talk all sports all the time all that fun stuff but uh but yeah now my my real big boy job is in sales i'm in columbus ohio now and uh hopefully in the near future back in in chicago or as close as i can get to, to sam panich over here hell yeah and sam tell I everybody for those who don't remember though i don't know how people wouldn't remember oh, actually stop. when i posted yesterday that you were coming on so many people DM me being like, oh my God, like I remember his episode. Like I'm <laughs> such a big fan, like love Sam. Thanks for bringing him back. So oh my you gosh. have fans here. I, you know, this is really refreshing because the only person that listens to Elevation Nation is my mother. So i um, really excited to come on a podcast where we have a few more listeners. It's great to be back. Had a great time on seeing other people. It was a long time ago with myself and Parker Yablon, my co-founder of Elevation Nation. And then Alana, of course, it's always such a treat when we get to have you on Elevation Nation. And, you know, I was kind of posting some promos that you shared for seeing other people. And Joey Lane, who's actually elevator number one. So, wow. Alana, I think you are elevator number 80. So, you both are it's in awkward. the nation. You both are in the fam. Joey's number one. And Joey was like, oh, my gosh. She seems incredible. This looks so awesome. And I was like, hold on. Let me face on Alana. Like, this will be her biggest episode if we can get Joey Lane on here too. And the reason being is because Joey's way funnier than I am. And so you just need to add a little comedy to lighten up some of the, I'm going to be a serious one answering these questions. Joey's going to make it comical and uh, hopefully we can hit all your audience members. So really glad to be back. So with Joey, we laugh with him. With Sam, we laugh at him. That's exactly, exactly right. Yep. right. Love it. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. We have a ton of questions. I'm so excited for this episode um, this is one of my favorite types of episodes to do because the majority of my listeners are female and all they want is a guy's perspective on what the heck is going on in their dating lives. And I cannot provide them with that because I am a woman. So thank you guys for volunteering as tribute to kind of give everyone a little clue into the male brain. Um, disclaimer, you guys are, are two people. You're not every man. So no promises that what you two say is, you know, truth, Bible, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to do our best here. I want to start just with a little background on the two of you. What is going on in your dating lives? And why are each of you single? 
Joey, let's start with you. Oh, man. Well, it's funny because I think the best part about this question and being here with Sam is that we could answer for each other, which is... Which, let's do it. I, I would rather not. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say for me, uh, a couple different things uh, as to what's going on. Definitely I'm out there. Definitely not afraid. Definitely, you know... I guess, want to be in a relationship, right? I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, I, I spent four years as a college athlete. I did that whole thing, you know, but you know, now it's okay. You're, 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 you're a young adult. It's, it's time to figure out what's next. I would say that um, the majority of my time spent, whether I like it or not is on random dating apps, whether, you know, they be the hinges of the world or, some other ones that that you need to pay for to to be on that I was for some reason selected to be on and stuff. Um, But the reason I think, among other things, is that I care, but it's not priority number one. Um, I would say that I travel a lot for work. Um, I travel to go home to Chicago a lot to see my friends and my family. I don't have a lot of friends and definitely not a lot of family here in Columbus, Ohio. It's not as easy to go out to a bar with buddies when you don't have a ton of buddies to do it and meet people that way. Um, I know Sam is is frowning over there, but when I go out to D.C. and go out with Sam and my friends that live in D.C., we have the best time ever. And that doesn't really happen here, unfortunately. It's there's there's pros and cons to every situation you're in. My pro is awesome that I get to stay around Ohio State uh, and the basketball program here and also have an incredible job that I love. Uh, it's just is I travel a ton, which is fine, honestly, but I'm not near my friends and my family, which kind of, kind of stinks. So that's, I don't like making excuses, but that's definitely that those are my excuses for why I'm single. I think those are really valid. You know, there are some places that are really hard to date in. And then there are some places that are easier though. At the same time, I have a ton of people who live in New York and are like, Oh, it's impossible to date in New York. There are so many options, but if you live in a place and you don't have all of your people around you, who would usually be your people that you go out with and like wingman each other with, yeah, it's definitely harder. Yeah, no, no, Sam. no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. It's uh, I love that we started with this question because Alana, we do this pretty much every week just without you here. It's like, yeah. Hey, what's up? What's your update? What do you got? For <laughs> what's us, wrong man? with you this week, Sam? I love it. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with you this week, Sam? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I have a few reasons probably why I'm single right now. In this very, very moment, um, I'm in a really busy and tough situation in work that I've never been in before. Uh, typically, like my job, I absolutely love. And right now, I'm just in a little bit of a tough place with my career. Um, and I'm trying to figure that out and navigate that out. So that's been like the here and now, that present moment. I think beyond that, and a little bit broader as a, as a, hint to my young 20s um it's been me not being probably ready and a combo of just like not necessarily finding the right person at the right time um so i think it's a combination of all those things which is okay um and i'm kind of starting to accept it and as i continue to work on myself and grow and work through therapy and mindset and grow and do my thing like i know eventually the right person will come around and i will be ready at that time so looking forward to that i love that if you each had a magic wand and can change one thing about modern dating what would it be damn i thought you were gonna say about myself (laughs) wish i was taller wish i was joey's height that'd be (laughs) sick um one thing about modern dating that's such a tough one i think there's a lot of things and we talked about this last time i was on seeing other people lana with these stigmas that these like unwritten rules within dating apps um i think one that i would probably get rid of is just like the amount of times you have to shoot your shot and people are kind of just like treating it as a game a little bit yeah i think that's tough for guys and girls right and i'm guilty of it you know passing the time sometimes by swiping or whatever it is and like not really being that serious about it but then there are days or weeks where you're like i really want to go on a date like in the next few weeks and so you treat it more seriously and so Sometimes it's hard to match that up timing wise with when you're swiping and on the app at the same time. Uh, That's such a good question. And I don't even know if I have a real answer, but I wish that, and 
obviously if we had the answers we would have created a new app that's just unbelievable that everyone would love but like everything about the online dating apps is so corny like everything is so every prompt every response every picture every caption is i interpret it all as very corny which part of that is is on me probably all of it is on me but i just i can't like I, me and me and Sam, our favorite things to do are to take screenshots of funny accounts and send them to each other. Like, it's just, I, I, I wish that pe- I, it's kind of like Sam's answer. I wish people took it a little bit more seriously, I guess. I don't know. And, and if you did take it seriously, I'd probably laugh at you at the same time. Just like if I took it seriously, you'd laugh at me. So I, I that just, there's so many different stigmas that are just so wild. Like, I don't even care about saying I'm on these dating apps anymore because everybody is, right? Like, that that's that's not scary. But now it's like, okay, now I'm on the app and I'm meeting people, whatever. But like, I also, I'm not putting anything about myself seriously on the apps because it's, I don't know, it's, it's a little cringy, corny, whatever you want to call it. And that's not how I want to come off. So it, it's it's just hard because then at the same time, you know, I'm reading these profiles and it's like, I'll fall for you if you trip me. It's like, come on, woman, we've seen that 92 times today already. Like, we got to be got to be better than that. So I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but I I it's my problem. It's a lot of other people's problems. I just think everything is so corny sometimes. Well, it's interesting that you say that, but then you say that you also your profile doesn't take it seriously. So you're part of the problem. Totally. hundred totally. percent. And cool. that's. Cool. And, and, Glad we're on the same yeah, page. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I know I'm part of the problem. My my answers to the prompts are a couple words. Like I'm not doing three truths and a lie. I used to, and it was and, and like one of my I like I saved my mom's life when I was in fifth grade, which is a stretch, but like I I, I did. And so like and then I would read that over again and be like, who am I to like put that in the world to someone that I don't know? Like it's just a little it's a little corny. So. Uh, that that's at least how I feel. I know for a fact, I'm part of the problem. No doubt about it. As long as we are aware, self-awareness is is the first step to anything. One more question. And then we're going to get into the listener questions. These are the Alana questions. What do you think that women get wrong about men when it comes to dating? Sam, I know my answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Not all men are, are bad guys. I think a lot of people get burned and I totally get it. And I'm sure it's frustrating, but we're not all bad guys. And so as difficult as it is to say, you kind of have to try to treat each person you meet with a fresh slate of opportunity and give them a chance. Um, Yeah. I would say something maybe a little bit more specific. I think that you got to realize that these, you guys want the same, we all want the same thing. Uh, You know, it's, that's a very common answer that I'm sure, you know, guys on dating apps maybe aren't looking to date people as much as they're looking to do other things uh, on the app. But at least from my perspective, I know I speak for Sam too. It's like, we want, assuming you guys are on the app for a relationship, we want a relationship also. And, you know, we, we are, we're cool with the romantic stuff, with the text, with the, everything like that's, that's all great. That just like, it puts a smile on your faces. It puts a smile on our faces too. Like all that is, is good stuff. You can never, I, I mean, like I've heard all these things go on Twitter and TikTok and you name it. Like you can, in my opinion, you can never send too many of those types of texts. Like that's, that's all, that's all good stuff in my eyes. Every single girl listening to this is going to want to date you after hearing that. <laughs> well, I hope they're in Columbus. I told him when he, when he said he wanted to, to Columbus, come Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now that we know a little bit about you two, where you're at in your dating lives, what you think of the dating landscape, let's dive in to the listener questions and shout out to everyone who sent these in. Honestly, there's like 10 times more questions than what we have time to answer, but we're going to get to as many as we can. And we'll probably bring these guys back for more. Number one, should I be worried if he's liking thirst traps on Instagram? I say no, because that's like a subconscious thing. I don't like, granted, I'm not worried about what other people are, are, are looking at my Twitter. I also kind of 
make it a, I don't like everything on Instagram or Twitter anyway because I don't think it's a good look like professionally let alone if you're in a relationship for some of the pictures that are posted you can still follow follow whoever you want but you don't have to you don't have to like everything you see but I I I think that there is some compromises that need to be made you know that that's a fair compromise in my opinion yeah I I actually side with Joey on this one I think with social media the like has evolved right like it's now used to joey's point as like a subconscious thing as as you flip through you kind of just do it um so i don't think there's too much meaning behind it now dms have a different intent but you didn't ask that question so you're gonna have to reach out to me and joey individually yeah, to you, get our take on that you, one you can like all the posts you want but as soon as you like a story if you see someone liking a story that's <laughs> it's, a, it's a different ball game yeah, I don't even, and I feel like most people are like this now too, where like I used to look and see every single person that liked an Instagram post. Actually, probably up until I graduated college, I would go through and like take a mental note of like the number of guys who would like my pictures. And now I don't know the last time I even looked at like the like number or like the number, like the specific people, like I haven't searched to see if certain people have unfollowed me or anything like that. I do agree that it's kind of taken uh life of its own where it's just like an acknowledgement of like oh it's it's second nature you're not even thinking about it so um, unless you you know this person unless he doesn't like anything on instagram but then there's this one person who every single post they're consistently liking their pictures like there was a guy i dated who that's kind of one of the ways i figured out that he was cheating on me because he would like and comment on these girls pictures and i'm like well who the fuck are they so. Yeah, that's a, yeah. you're right. It's a, it's a slippery slope, but I also don't want all girls to get too paranoid. That's what I, that's what I was going to say, Sam, like pick and choose your battles. Like that's not something to get worked yeah. up about or get paranoid, worked up as in anxious and paranoid about it. Agreed. If he says he's busy at work and doesn't feel well, is that true? Or is it an excuse for distance? Every, every day he doesn't feel well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, then he might be an, an excuse that he needs to see a doctor. I mean, I I don't know, Joe. What do you think on that um, one? I don't know. I if if I say I'm busy at work, I genuinely mean I'm busy at work. Uh, it's at least for me because I truthfully don't have the most anxious and stressful job day in and day out. There are there are days, there are weeks where it is stressful, and but like today. I was chilling. Like I was texting everybody back right when they sent texts, you know, I'm it, no worries. Um, but if they don't feel well, that's probably a lie. At least for me, I wouldn't, I would probably text people back quicker if I didn't feel well. I don't know. I'd be on my phone. Like, does that mean I want to FaceTime you if I'm in my bed sick? Like, no, but I would be texting more people, maybe not Snapchatting, but I'd be texting more people if I didn't feel well than if I wasn't like, I need entertainment. Like I'm a, like, at least that's, again, that's for me. Like if I'm at, if I'm working from home and like, I have a break, like I'm calling somebody to talk to them. Like I don't just sit there in silence ever. So, um, but that, that again, that's, that's just me. I would trust the, I would trust the busy at work. I maybe wouldn't trust the not feeling so well. Cause no one's feeling a hundred percent ever. Never. Yeah. I think if it's a repeated thing where like you reschedule like a date three times and every single time they're either busy at work or don't feel well, like at that point, move on. I think I would give somebody like 72 hours to reschedule. And if they don't, then they're just, they're not, they're not prioritizing. Alana, you know? I will say, um, I had a recent experience just like this where we had set up a date. I had gone and made a reservation. I did everything I'm supposed to do. She, I said, what days work, what times, like I'm pretty flexible. So uh, again, not super stressed out at work right now. <laughs> so um, she, she gave me a day, whatever. And then that morning hit me with the, Hey, I'm not feeling so well. Can we reschedule? And I said, absolutely. And then I'm again, this is me. I'm not reaching back out to her to try and reschedule. The ball is in, is in your court. If you, if you truly wanted to do something, we, you would reschedule. And if you didn't, then that, then that's fine. So that, that just happened to me. I do think 
if it was reversed, I and I truly didn't feel well, I would then reach out and try and schedule something. So and and if you couldn't tell by the tone in my voice, I we we did not reschedule anything. Sam. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I've been going through some stuff at work where after work I was having a lot of like anxiety and not feeling like myself, which never happens. I'm always I'm not as exciting and upbeat as Joey, but I'm always pretty good after work. And it wasn't that I didn't feel well. I didn't feel like myself. Like I knew my mental state was not normal. And there wasn't anything I could really do to fix that except kind of ride the wave out these past this past month, talk to my therapist and try to go on walks and work through it. Joey came to DC and visited me in like one of my worst weeks I've ever had at work. And I was a sad puppy. And so, you know, like if you're sick every day, go to a doctor. If you're struggling with your mentality every day, go to a therapist. Like if you're sick one day, feel better, like take some vitamin C and then reschedule. So I think it just depends on, I wish this person had more context on how many times they've had these excuses, but those are our answers. We pre presented every scenario for you. Do with it what you will. Literally the most long-winded every scenario answer. Well, yeah. I think yeah, we should sorry. probably be we a like little bit talk. more concise, Alon, and get through more, right? Let's try okay. it. All right. He ended things by ghosting me. Now he likes every story of mine. I try to chat with him, but he doesn't answer. What gives? That's weird. He's probably messing with you. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sam. Not worth your time. Not worth your time. Yeah, that's what that, I was that doesn't say. even matter. It doesn't even matter what he thinks. Not worth your time. If he ghosted you, then he ghosted you. That's what he. That's what. I, I don't know if Sam. I've done it. Like Sam, I'm sure Sam is too. Like. It was my intention. So just let it, let it rip. Do not, yeah, don't waste your time. Unless you want to. Stop trying to chat with yeah, him. Unless you want to, really bad, but don't waste your time. What is the best question that you've been asked by someone on a date? Follow up, what is the worst question you've been asked by someone on a date? Getting deep. I like when people ask me um, about my family, just because I like talking about that, because I have a really close family. Um, I also like when, uh, we talk about, I always ask, like, if we're talking about our jobs, I ask like what, what your dream job is. So I like being asked that too. Um, talking about, you know, aspirations and, and the fun stuff. Um, that those are the, those are my favorite questions to be asked. Not very specific. Um, the work, I, I, I don't know if I have a worse question, but like, if we're out and having drinks and someone goes, what's your drink of choice? You're, you're like, I'm, you're looking at it. Like I, you know, but, um, uh, that Sam, do you have a worse question? I'll think of one. Cause trust me, I have some crazy, crazy weird stories. So I'll, I'll think about one. God, I, you know, it's tough to, to think of one question that's been bad. I usually don't love when, if a girl brings up my younger brother, that's usually probably a red flag. So don't love when they, they're asking about my, my brother, Ben, even though we love him. Um, what do you mean? Like brings him up? Like if like, I, you know, like if you know my brother, okay. You, if they this, know did him, you kiss, did you kiss my brother? Like, I don't, I don't know if I want to take you on a date. then. <laughs> like, Does this happen not, often? It doesn't happen often. That was just like one time that I could think of that happening. Um, I don't have that problem with my younger sister. <laughs> that's a great point joey um, you never know that's yeah, true yeah. best questions you get asked like I, i'm like joey i like talking about what dream job you could have um i like just when people ask about things you're passionate about when people talk about their passions or your passions like i don't really care what your passion is i just want you to be passionate that's one of the things i'm looking for in a partner joey if you couldn't tell by his video passion about shoes yeah, I don't really give a shit about shoes, but Joey's passionate. But you love and, him because he and has I love that him because he's got a passion, and so yeah, it's beautiful. Sam's passionate yeah, about a bunch it. of weird things that I won't talk about, but we, but I That's still love him point. regardless. I wish I had a worse question. Oh my gosh, there's. You'll think of one. I know, I I know you will. It'll come to yeah. you. How long into dating does a guy know if he wants to be serious or not? I feel like it's very early on. Yeah, it's very early on. Right away. Very right early. Away, I would say. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. You should, we should wait longer. Yeah. We, me, and I mean, try to see if, then maybe this is why we're single. I don't know. I, seriously. I mean, me, and, again, I'll use me, me and Sam as an example every time. We're constantly sending screenshots of people's profiles back and forth to each other. Like, I'm going to marry this girl, stuff like that, you know, like, which is, 
a little bit sarcastic, but not really. Like, you know, they have clearly you've been talking back and forth and it's like a funny conversation and they're a good looking girl. Then like, you know, it just, we, we strive for, for the end goal, you know? So, um, yeah, I would say pretty early on, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't really had a super serious relationship in a few years. So I don't know if I'm the best guy to answer that question specifically, but I, but I know my thoughts are early on for sure. Yeah, I agree early on. You have a good follow-up though, Alana, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, or I was going to ask how many girls have there been that you guys claimed you were going to marry? Who's more guilty dozens. of it? Just no, dozens. I, I, Sam, you're probably <laughs> the lonely too, world out right? there. Not to throw you I'm definitely the more guilty. Yeah. No, no. Um, I, okay. I have a thing that I'm working through with my therapist right now that I'm, it's fine. I talk about, I talk about this on the Lana's podcast. Everyone's pretty, pretty cool about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I unfortunately try to always find someone that I have a crush on. I always want like that crush. I don't know if it's cause like back in, you know, middle school or high school, you have that like excitement in your stomach. So like if there's no equivalent of a crush, like I work in my effing room. Like I don't meet people until I go out. Like you're at a bar, like you can't really develop a crush, right? There's no like from afar thing. So unfortunately, my equivalent of developing a crush is seeing a girl on a dating app right now. That's super unhealthy, but like that's why I text Joey. I'm in love with this girl. Like obviously it's sarcastic, but you're like, all right, I got a little crush. It's exciting. Every girl listening right now is thinking, wow, guys, they're just like us. Yeah, they also we are. just fall in love and <laughs> text their that friends is. saying, oh my god, I'm in love. How does my last name or how does his last name sound with my first name? We don't go that far. We don't, we don't we go to wedding to. planning. Because we don't change Yeah, that's things. true. Pantage. Pantage is Joey, a young Joey, for right? anybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Why does he want to reconnect if he still doesn't have time for me? He likes the attention. Yeah, he want, wants someone to talk to. Wants someone to hang out with. Wants to have a crush. Yeah. Wants to have a crush. Want, probably. Wants to have a companion. Something. Without effort. Something even, even more than that, probably. If. You know, obviously, like that, that's a real thing when you're a 20 something year old, you know? So, uh, yeah. They want to talk. They want to talk. They want to talk and cuddle, obviously. Yeah. And it's a dangerous path to go down, especially like if you like that person, but they're still not giving you time. Like they're kind of giving you those breadcrumbs and you feed into it. You're going to get hurt. And, I definitely put myself in that scenario so many times and even like for years with some people and it's just not worth it. Like there's going to be somebody who you can find who actually wants to be with you, not just wants the attention and wants that like pen pal ship and someone to call when they don't have anyone else. Guys perspective on sex. If it's early on, do you lose interest? If they hold out, do you get bored? neither for me i no i don't have a real deal opinion truthfully um fi fine waiting no problem with that all all good in, in my opinion yeah i think it just comes down to communication right if you're still like flirty and showing interest then i think that's important and again the quicker you can just communicate and get comfortable with that it shouldn't be a weird thing that you have to talk about. Just communicate. Most important thing. There's not a steadfast rule. I agree. Can guys and girls be just friends? Yeah, we can. Because I'm on a podcast with one of my great girlfriends and great Can a single friends. guy and a single girl be just friends? Well, we thank you for clarifying your question. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Cause I know that it's, cause tougher. I know that I've been in both positions, right. Where it's like, not necessarily, it's not necessarily like you have a girlfriend and she's, and she's like always with this dude. Like, Oh, we're just friends. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. It's like, if you're chasing after a girl and you see her with somebody else, even if 
you even if it's not you don't have a relationship with them then you feel a certain type of way and the reverse is true too like i totally understand you know if i was at work talking to my coworker, like i'm like no no she's just a friend like that would be it would be weird like i i don't know i i probably have too much trust in people so i i would be fine i know for me if they truly are just a friend i mean that but like I, I don't know, Sam, like I, have, there's a million people that I could bring up, but I'm not going to name names, but like, they're truly some of my best friends in the world. And there's zero intention beyond that. Like I've taken girls to weddings and like, like, and, and, and nothing happened. Cause we're just really good friends. So, um, that, but I'm like, so funny. I'm giving both sides the answer. No, the, the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm also on team. No. But I think it here's the thing. I've seen it work, but it never worked for me. I think you really have to be like a certain type of person for it to work. But I would also say no. Tread lightly. Don't have a wine night. That's all I'll yeah. say. Is it really fine for a girl to text a guy first? Yeah. A bajillion percent. I would die yes. I would die for that. <laughs> So yes, Just text you first. don't, you guys don't realize how many girls think that it's absolutely unacceptable to do that. Like if you're trying, if it's unacceptable for you because of chivalry, like then that's a stupid answer. If it's, if you want the guy to make effort and you've texted every time in a row to initiate plans and you're always starting the conversation, then that's different. But like, we're all busy. We're all working. We all have lives. We all have families. We all have things going on. We're taking out our cute ass dog Barkley on walks. Like we all got shit going on communicate talk we're all humans also sometimes texting doesn't work i like the spontaneous call on a walk home hey what's up how are you usually i do it to joey joey knows when i have a girl to talk to his calls drop off a little bit more so where i stand on this whole thing is like i feel like if i am texting first all the time i'm annoying you and i don't want to be annoying and i also want something to be reciprocated that I know that you're interested in having a conversation or spending time with me or whatever the case may be. So um, I'll text first all the time. Like I have no problem doing that, but I just, it's just at some point it gets where to the point where I'm afraid that, you know, I'm being annoying for lack of a better term. So um, yeah, but Sam's right. If he's talking to a girl, he's not talking to me, which is fine. No. Okay, ladies, loud and clear. You're allowed, in fact, encouraged to text a guy first. They appreciate it. <laughs> please, please do it. Yeah, stop playing um, these games. There, yeah, it's ridiculous. There are a lot of follow-up questions similar. Do, do you guys care if a girl texts first after the previous conversation ended? Um, will a guy always text first? after a first date if they're interested or should the girl text if she doesn't hear from him that's interesting i actually have a different rule of thumb that i go off of Ooh, which i hope is, yours is the same as mine sam that'd be awesome if i take what a girl that? out on a date and i text her to make sure she got home safe or whatever and she doesn't thank me like thank you for having me or i had a really nice time like thanks again then i'm like oh she's not interested or like i'm she must not have liked the vibe if it, same exact thing, if I, if I take you out and we have a nice dinner, we get drinks, whatever it is, I don't care if I s spend $10 or a hundred dollars, whatever, right? Just a simple thank you is very necessary. I think I like, if you don't say I'm totally with Sam, if there's no thank you, then I can just tell you're not interested, which is fine. You should probably thank me regardless of whether or not you're interested, but that's a different story. Um, but like, yeah, I, I don't know if the, girls need to be worried about following up but a great way to follow up is by saying either thank you the next morning or thank you an hour and a half after you get home or whatever i mean sam's a nicer guy than me where i'm sure he's checking in on every date to make sure that they get home safely Un unfortunately or, or fortunately columbus is a very small town and i probably see them walk into their apartment from my street because it's everyone lives by each other so it's not a big of a worry for me but um, a simple thank you is it kills two birds with one stone. It makes the guys feel 
appreciated, then it's also like a really good way to get the conversation back up and running. Do you need that thank you over text if they already thanked you in person? I, you don't need it. Like, of course, they're going to say thank you right after. But again, I think it the thank you express interest more than like politeness. And, and I think a text thank you is more genuine than just like we've been taught. We've been taught when the food is put in front of you by the waiter or waitress to say thank you since we were a little kid. Like you're just saying thank you be, almost because it's second nature, maybe. And then mm -hmm. you don't have to take out your phone and text them and say thank you. So I think I think a, a text thank you is probably a little bit more genuine. Are you aware that there is a lot of content out there and a lot of dating influencers that are telling women to not send thank you texts after the date? No, we certainly are not aware, Alana. Can you please enlighten us before we stick our foot in our yeah, mouth what, anymore? What's the, reason, what's the reasoning behind <laughs> Damn that? Damn it, Joey. The, the reasoning, and, and it's I not mean, it's something I wholeheartedly disagree with. But the reasoning is that it interrupts his thought process. What, what, <laughs> what am I thinking about? What the thought process? <laughs> what are we thinking of about? Of reflecting on how the date went, deciding if you want to see her again. Bruh, okay. I'm going to dis definitely disagree on this, but I'm no dating guru. So I'm glad Alana's on my side. I'm not like coming home and, and like taking notes. Like I just finished like a joey lane basketball game at ohio state like i'm not like recapping game film and like breaking it down i either enjoyed a vibe and she didn't catfish me and we hit it off and we had a nice time or we didn't like i, I will know within 45 minutes of talking if the vibe is right or not i'm not like reflecting on if i want to see you again now. again to joey's point i probably know before i even take you out if i think i want to see you yes. again <laughs> I, I was just going to say that if girls think that we are, and it, is it, is it bad that I'm saying girls instead of like females or women? No, I yes, also say, I say girls and okay. boys and guys. I don't say men and women. And I don't know. I still think I'm 12. So my dad yeah, keeps no, yelling at me that you, you, we can't say girls anymore. We're too old, Joey. No, I don't. Right. I'm not um, a lady or a woman. Don't you dare. Okay. I am lady. a girl. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> that my, my biggest issue with myself is that I'm just incredibly immature. So I, I feel like I, catch myself sometimes. So that was me catching myself, but girls, I'm sticking with girls. Um, if girls think that we come back into our apartments and like journal and write down and like, and like go and be, okay, here are the pros, here are the cons, you know, how there need to be eight pros in order to outweigh the cons so that I go on a second date. Like it's not at all it. It's very much, I'm sure you're very aware of the one or zero rule. It's very much one or zero. It's, it's, it's very black and white. It's either we had a good time or we didn't. There's plenty of dates where in the middle of the date, I was like checking my watch, like, let's get this, let's get this over with. And uh, I know then and there, I'm still going to say uh, probably, which is probably bad by me, but I'm still going to say like, oh my God, this was fun. We should do it again sometime. Right. Just because I'm a nice guy. But, you know, I, I do not think that there is a lot of thoughts to interrupt when we get back to our apartment, we're probably, what we're probably doing truthfully is I'm probably taking off my shoes. I'm walking straight into the room. I'm sitting in right now, turning on my Xbox and playing Fortnite with my friends. Like I'm like, I'm and telling them about how the date went and saying either, yes, I want to see her again or no, I don't. And, and saying why I don't. Cause she did this. She asked me this. She said her, fa she thinks her family's in the mafia, which is one of the dates that I went on, which was hilarious. And you know, I could go, on and on about funny stuff like that. But that's probably what we're doing is either watching a, a sporting event and calling our friends or watching it with some buddies or going and playing friggin' Call of Duty and calling a night after that. So, yeah. In conclusion, a thank you text is a good... Boys, boys don't have thought date. processes to disrupt. You're good. That's fine. Don't have Send the thank period. you text. It's the right no thing to do. Great. Okay, there are a bunch of questions that are pretty similar um, in another realm related to texting about we're having good in-person dates, but then they're not reaching out over text in between, or we're seeing each other regularly, but takes 24 hours to answer my text. A guy asked me out via text, but then took day three days to respond to set up a plan. 
what's going on in these situations, do you think, if there is in-person stuff happening, but then the texting in between is just not? I have friends that are just so bad at responding in general, guys and girls, especially guys. Like, I don't, I try to not take it personally. Sometimes I do. Like, I, I have former teammates that are just, not, they just they just don't look at their phone. They're the classic guys that have 200 unread texts and 82 Instagram notifications and all this stuff, right? Some people are just like that. For me, on the flip side of it, if I know that I'm really good about being responsive, like that's like something I hold to a very high standard. It's part of my job, like to be very responsive. So I'm in, therefore in my personal life, I'm also very responsive. Um, that's like my biggest pet peeve is if people are like, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm such a bad texter. It's like, what does that mean? Like, come on, like you, either you care or you don't, and it's fine if you don't, but I don't know what, what being a bad texter means. Like we're all, we all have our phones on us 24 seven. We all are looking at our phones 24 seven. If you're not kudos to you, it's very impressive if you're not. Um, but from a guy's perspective, if he's taking a long time to respond, I don't know what's going on. I I would, again, side on giving them the benefit of the doubt. But like from my perspective, throw out guys or girls, if someone's not responding to me, it's very, very frustrating. So I have definitely thought lower of somebody going into a date or after a date or whatever because of the response time. And that's probably affected outcomes in the future. So like, however you feel about it, don't be afraid to to feel that way about it. I wouldn't, I, I don't know if like worrying or not worrying is the answer, but like, if they stop being responsive, then that's probably something to worry about. Sam. I'm going to agree with Joey on this one just for the sake of time, but yeah, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's spot on. No, so it's, it's the right answer, but also guys and girls both do this. So you guys know mm-hmm. why you do it. Why do you think guys do it? Exactly. Look at, look at your ladies. Boom. When reconnecting with an ex-boyfriend who broke up with you after more than a month of no contact, how long should you give the connection before you start to question what his intentions are and if he's actually open to potentially giving the relationship another shot? He's not great with talking about his feelings, so I don't want to put on pressure too soon. Sheesh. I guess I'm going to have to take this one. I don't really have this situation in my life, so. Yeah, I mean... It's tough. I don't want you to get your hopes up, but also like if he's bad at talking about his emotions and this is his way of reaching out, this might be his call. Um, some guys just operate differently. I am team communicate. So like, I know he might not like talking about his emotions, but you can just level set as soon as you feel comfortable and confident of like, Hey, I just was wondering, like, obviously it's so nice talking all the time, but what's what's the deal like why are we why are we talking again right and i hate being that blunt but sometimes i think to communicate and get your point across you kind of have to so that would be my guidance um but every guy's different so can, can i ask a question no no good yep. job Alana. yes Go ahead, Joey. you may you raised your hand um thank you is a month a long time I feel like no. it's not a long time no it's very okay. quick I, I think there's there's Beautiful. a lot of other stuff with this question that i actually would just feel a little nervous about after a month of no contact is not that long. Um, getting through something like breaking up and getting back together with somebody who is not great at talking about feelings. That seems like a huge mountain to climb and a big challenge. And Joey and I love feelings. There are guys out there that love feelings. You just got to find them. It's all good. We, we really love, love guys who love feelings. Yeah. Joey love Joey's really like love inside feelings. out. I'm working man. at it though. I'm working on it though. <laughs> Sam loves feelings it's too much for me, honestly. Love you, buddy. Dating a 37 year old divorced man. He says he wants to take it slow and does not want to become exclusive yet. Says he really likes me and is seeing only me, but that's because he does not have time to date multiple people. He's busy, but I do see him active on apps occasionally. Been seeing each other since mid December. It's now mid March. Disclaimer we both travel a lot, eight dates in so far, sleep over recently for the first time. Am I being strung along or does he really want to take it slow? Again, might be a little bit out of our wheelhouse on this one, yeah. but uh, <laughs> like, I can imagine a divorce is very difficult. I can imagine <laughs> there's a lot of stress. Probably like, got kids. Things we haven't even thought about. Like how do you split a TV in half? Right? Like 
I can only imagine how difficult and stressful a divorce is, and I hope I never have to actually find that out. So, I mean, I think you can give it a benefit of a doubt. He's 37 years old. Hopefully, he's got his shit together enough. But I also would keep your guard up that you're not a rebound. Like, not to be an asshole. Sorry. But, like, quick out of a divorce might just be trying to find himself again and how to We date. don't know. We don't know when the divorce was. That's a good point. I would Fair. say just ask. Say, I really enjoy spending time with you. And I'm excited to see where this goes. But in order to protect my feelings, I do want to know if you see this going somewhere or if this is really kind of all it's going to be. I had a girl do that to me recently. Sorry, not to sidetrack. Super refreshing. But like, again, I've been going through really hard shit at work. And so I just wasn't myself, wasn't able to put enough into trying to develop the relationship. And she just called me out on my bullshit. And it wasn't even me trying to be an asshole and, or her. She was just like, hey, we haven't really had this talk yet. What are you trying to do here? And it led into a really good like hour-long conversation of us just communicating, which I think was important. And eventually like didn't work out. But I think it was really nice that someone just kind of called me out on that shit and talked about it. You'd so much rather have the conversation and get your answer than yeah. sit there and not know and – anxiously come up with a million different scenarios in your head and overthink exactly. and it feels horrible like just ask Life's the only person who can tell you the answer is it. that person exactly yeah. what does it mean when he keeps telling me how much he cares about me but he makes absolutely no effort to progress things but yet he says he wants nobody else and just isn't ready for a relationship Am I allowed? Am I allowed to be just totally honest? Please, yeah, that's you, what we're here for. Yeah, no, no, I'm joking. I, I, obviously, um, I, we've been giving people the benefit of the doubt all benefit of the doubt all show. He's definitely lying. <laughs> I mean, if he if he cared, then you say, okay, well, if you care, this is what would mean a lot to me, and so show show me that you care, like you're saying. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that. Number one, he's probably seeing other people. Number two, he, he he doesn't care like he's saying. He's lying to you. That's what I think. And if for some reason, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, Joey, even though I think you're right. That's fine. If for Good some reason, up. he's got some commitment issues or something that he's got to work through that you don't know about yet. Now's a good time to probably just That's uncover good. those a bit. <laughs> like, try to, try to see what's going on. Yeah. I think there's a lot of excuses happening. And I think the best way to tell if somebody cares about you is if they show it. He's lying. Yeah, if he doesn't take you on a vacation, buy you a ring right now. He's all right, lying. relax. Relax. I'm just, kidding. Yeah, I'm just messing. Uh, but yeah, I think it's pretty easy to show effort and commitment if you yeah. really do want to only be with someone. So. And, and you can sit there and make excuses for them all yeah. day. They're busy. They're just going through shit right now. But if they liked you and wanted to be with you, they would make it happen. Yeah. Agreed. Went on five dates with a guy and he didn't make a move. On five dates. Okay. We have a ton to talk about and text almost every day for three months. We met up a few weeks ago to talk about what this was and why he didn't make a move. He said it's because we friend zoned quickly and he feels like he's in a weird transition period and doesn't know what he wants and didn't make a move, didn't want to make a move and then mess something up. He also reaffirmed that he finds me attractive. Do you believe the transition bit? Or was he just not interested? Also, he said multiple times how he wants to be friends. We work at the same company as of three weeks ago. It's a very large company, though. But he's continued to text six to 12 texts in one set every few days with articles and podcasts I should read. Should I stop responding? It, he say that he he friend zoned her? She, she friend zoned him? Or he, he just thinks got they friend zoned each other quickly. And he feels like he's in a weird well, transition period. Eight? Oh, he's saying before they went on dates. Maybe I, I think for, I think from the dates. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if you need to stop texting him. It, yeah, but like, I don't think there's a romantic thing you should be pursuing with him. Like, if you want to work husband, then like fine. But I don't think there's anything romantic there going on. Some some guys aren't aren't good at making the first move no matter how bad they want to you know yeah, yeah but it's the friend part he said the friend part that's what's throwing me i don't me. the friend part is 
I don't get, I don't even understand. I don't understand the friend zone friend. Did they friend zone before? Are they friend zone now? Does he get friend zoned often? Cause that's, that's probably a problem also. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. What's that's, jumping that's out the, to me here is the line. He says he doesn't know what he wants. That's all you need to know. <laughs> on to the next. He and can, he can figure it out. He doesn't have to really... do it on your time. What'd you say? Oh man. I was just going to say, and you can always just go up to him at work if things change. Yeah. Just grab his face. <laughs> yeah. See it. Talk about making the first move. Nothing oh, yeah. better than in the janitor's office on the third floor. Oh my God. <laughs> How does a guy know that he's found his person slash the one? God, what a great question. Can someone answer yeah. this for me? Oh no. <laughs> oh, Anna, can you answer this for us? I'm not a guy, so I can't. Jake's not home. Damn it. All right, Jake. Let, let us know after, man. Um, I don't know. There's obviously like things things you're looking for, um, you know, qualities that you'd like in a person. But I think your person will. I actually just read a book, Alana, all about this. I didn't even tell you. I totally forgot. Um, what's it called? Uh, your twin flame, or you only fall in love three times? Have you read that book? I haven't read that, but I've heard about the concept. Pretty crazy concept. Essentially, Do you believe it. Like, it? Yeah. Oh my God. The first chapter I was reading that, I was like, holy shit. That is one of my ex-girlfriends to a T to a T. Um, so yeah, I think again, it's not going to be like this perfect person that never upsets you, but I do think it's a person that you can't live your life without and want to, that helps you grow into a better version of yourself. So I think you feel it. I hope so. At least like me and Joe are out here searching, man. We're searching. I want to have that feeling. Yeah, I, 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 I ditto what Sam said. Ditto. All Thanks, right. Brother. There's so much more that I want to get to. We're going to have to do a part two, and I'm holding you guys to that. Love it. We have Love nods. It. Are we consenting to a part two? Yeah. Absolutely. Fabulous. Consent is sexy. Don't they say that, too? It, they they do. Sexy, People do. It is. Yeah. Before I let you guys go, my favorite question to ask at the end of every episode, and Sam, you've already answered this, so I have a different question for you. But my favorite question to ask, Joey, what is the best piece of dating advice you've ever received or have to share? Wow, that's I wow. I um, You got this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess like be yourself, right? Um I, I think that that's easy. Easy to say, hard to do. Um but if you're not yourself, then you're probably not going to find the the right person. Um so be yourself what if that means being corny on Hinge, then be corny on Hinge, but um but, but joey yourself. probably won't match with you <laughs> right that's right um but yeah i would say be yourself unapologetically be yourself don't be afraid to uh be who you are and uh, you know the let the chips fall where they may from there love it sam what is one thing that you have learned about yourself in dating and in love in therapy lately Mm. So I, I refrain from taught bringing this up in terms of when you just asked, what am I looking for to find my right person? Because for the past two years in talking to therapy, I keep saying, well, I want to have that spark. I want to have that spark with that person. And we've gone back and forth a lot on what that spark actually means. And if that spark is a good thing, or if that spark is just excitement or a crush that will peter out over time. So now that I'm 27 years old and trying to find my Jake, right? Like I need to find someone that I want to be with for the rest of my life. Not that just excites me for right now. And so it's a little bit contradictory of me wanting to have a crush, but wanting that crush to be sustained. And so I'm working through that right now. I don't know if it's a piece of advice, but it's something that I'm trying to figure out how to navigate a little bit better. That's beautiful. And I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with. So thank you for sharing that. And I look forward to hearing more of that journey for you. Me too. Maybe one day I'll come on this damn show with a girlfriend. We'll see. Yeah. Sam, Joey, thank you both so much for being here. Where can everybody find you? Joey, start with you. Um, I don't know if people do Twitter, but that's where I am most. People Twitter. Uh, at, people tweet. At, at Joey, at Joey Smoke 14 on Twitter, at the Joey Lane 
it's a it's a it's funny because I went to Ohio State at the Joey Lane on Instagram and TikTok. I've started to post a lot of TikToks lately on the TikTok grind. Um, that's that's where you can find me. My LinkedIn, Joey Lane. <laughs> I don't know. If you want a net jet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. If anybody you know needs to fly privately, let me know. I can help. I think know. you're forgetting another Twitter account account of yours that oh, yes. people need to know about. Oh yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you want, yeah, if you want updates on my dating life, there's uh, an account that I guess a fan made back when I was in college playing basketball. That's called "Does Joey Lane Have a Girlfriend?" Um, it hasn't. There's no tweets since for five years. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, Keeping but everyone I do remember, on the edge of their seats. I do remember vividly in college, one of my coaches showing me the account and being like, you have to find who it is and tell them to stop. So that's why it stopped. Oh my God. I, I totally get that. Um, and then my, I guess my podcast, which I, if we gain one listener, if we have a Venn diagram of one listener in the center, it would be very funny, but that's Drive the Lane podcast. Drive the Lane. We have 30% got male listeners here. Don't worry. Okay, great. I got you. I, I, I'm, hey, I'm get, talk, we're doing the benefit of the doubt all show. I'll give you the benefit of the I doubt. I love it. Sam? Oh, my God. It's I'm so happy that we got to connect two elevators and two amazing friends together on this thing. So serendipitous. I love it. Um, you can find me at Sam underscore P underscore Panich on Instagram. Um, you can also check my podcast and my company, my nation that I'm building with my co-host and also guest of seeing other people parker yablon it's called elevation nation where we're trying to elevate the minds and communities of young adults throughout the world um and yeah this is always such a pleasure i just love doing this i wish i had better advice i'm nervous for the comments because last time joey some people some people did not like my answers on some things I can't wait really wait oh yeah oh yeah we had, we had a little we had a little drama, but that's okay. Oh, I can't boy. wait to go back and forth in the comments. I don't know if that's Joey loves that trolls. People do, but I'm I'm in. You, I'm so in. Oh my you guys God. will see Joey in pop- the comments. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. If someone calls me out, I'm I'll be go right back at him. And just to plug really quick, Alana, last thing. Um, you know, obviously Joey and I gave a lot of advice. People get to hear our vibe, but just like to plug Joey really quick. Over six foot Jewish guy, former collegiate <laughs> athlete, you know, super handsome, got a great family. Nancy and Scott and Hannah are incredible people <laughs> from Chicagoland area. And, you know, he's just an incredible friend. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And so if anyone's interested, <laughs> um, you're going to have to go through me, but we can, we can certainly facilitate some, uh, some connections here. Joey, you need to put that clip on your hinge profile. Uh, that's a lot. I got I don't you, know. bro. Talk, talk about corny and cringe. I don't know if I can <laughs> put that on my age profile. I don't know. But that one, that would do it for me. But, but everything that he said is true. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Thanks for listening, daters. I hope today's episode made you feel just a little bit less alone out there, no matter what your status might be. Give your finger a break from swiping and hit that follow and review button instead. And if you have any burning questions or want to share your own dating horror stories, reach out to seeingotherpeoplepodcast at gmail.com. And in the meantime, keep on seeing other people.